hey. <laughs> so I did this on purpose um, just to catch people's attention so they watch the video. But no, really, I, I just want to say don't ever get bangs when you try to grow them out. It looks like this. It's really bad. Okay, two-hour devotional. Let me just clean myself up a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so this is called Seasons of Fruitlessness. In word, I read from this little book here, by the way. It's called, um, oh, can you read this? The one year at his feet devotional. It's backwards. At his feet devotional. It's really good. No Christian is fruitful all the time. There are silent years of Paul, Peter, and even Jesus about which we know nothing. Years of pruning or preparation before a time of abundance. This is the scriptural pattern of God's work in our lives as laid out in Psalm 1 that says he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. So we must not worry in our latent times. But the other side of the coin is that every Christian is fruitful some of the time if the enemies of the seed are dealt with properly. A persistent and consistent lack of fruit should prompt a believer to ask these questions. What is hindering God's fruitfulness in my life? Is there anything I'm tolerating that stands in the way of God's work for me? Jesus' parable of the sower in Matthew 13 indicates three categories of enemies to the sower's work. The evil one, trouble and persecution, and the worries of life, and the deceitfulness of wealth. The Christian who does not actively stand firm in opposition to any of these will bear the consequences of fruitlessness and miss out on the joy of God's bounty. Okay, so let me read one more thing. Do you struggle with a discrepancy between the portrayal of the Christian life in Scripture, abundant life and rivers of living water, and your actual experience? You may be in a preparation phase or there may be a hindrance. How can you know? Fruitless periods in a Christian's life call for discernment, a quality often lacking in such times. But God promises wisdom to those who ask, so ask. His if we seek his guidance and prepare to accept whatever he might say, he will show us what hinders his work in our lives. And that's true, because for a while, after we moved here, I felt like I wasn't doing what I'm supposed to do, you know, singing and ministry and all that stuff. But there was a season where, especially at church, I wasn't on any of the worship teams or anything like that. But I felt that that was a season for me to sit back and just settle here with Mike and uh, not be so active in stuff and just receive more and go to church and listen to the sermons and just kind of allow God's timing to be what it was going to be. And you can ask God what's going on in your own life, because maybe that's not the case for you. Maybe you're sitting back for other reasons, not doing things and using excuses for things or just, you know, laziness, which I'm guilty of myself. Um, so a lot of questions to ask yourself and feel free to leave comments. Okay. I really need coffee now. Bye.